how does a young man that grows up in Stillwater, Minnesota, moves on to St. John's to play some football, eventually end up as the chief of staff for the president of the United States? That has been the path of Dennis McDonough. We sat down and found out that sports had a lot to do with making it to the White House. Dennis McDonough spends much of his time here in the White House, and he credits some of that to this man. He played for the legendary John Gallardi at St. John's. Let's start by talking football. You, you're a product of Stillwater and St. John's. W what did Coach Gallardi mean to you in your life as you look back now? Well, I'll tell you, John Gallardi basically does what every good coach does, every great coach does, which is he convinces his players, uh, no matter they're some hayseed from Stillwater, that they can do whatever they put their mind to. And when you think about great military leaders, great managers, great coaches, they have what John Gallardi has. And he convinced me as a young kid that if I put my mind to it, I could do whatever I wanted. And that served me well uh, every day since. You also played for legendary George Thole. What was George Thole similar? Or did you learn some of the same things? Same thing, different styles, um, but same thing. George was, uh, he was a, he would get you motivated. He would fire you up. Um, John knew he didn't, it was not his style. Uh, he would ease you into the deep end. George Thole would th throw you into the deep end, that same thing. He convinced you that you could conquer the world if you set your mind to it. He is a proud St. John's alum to be sure, but what he learned on the playing field is what he believes matters a lot to his current status. What do you tell the guys playing football at St. John's and, and you have a chance to give them advice knowing what you know, what do you tell them? Savor every single minute. Don't rush yourself? Don't rush yourself. I, I said to a young guy on uh, you know, when, as the Johnnies were playing the, the Tommies last year, that ESPN fired the whole thing up. So ESPN asked me a couple of questions. I said, I would trade my job for that kid's pads and helmet today. Uh, the moment you leave that field and you never go back, man, it's brutal. It is, isn't it? So you got to live it up and make the most of every single minute. Do you think that that helps you a lot now, the fact that you participated in sports and what you have to do now? Like everybody in their jobs has that, and I think you just develop your life skills over time. You develop good teammates. I have an unbelievable wife, unbelievable kids, unbelievable brothers and sisters, uh, great priest friends that are looking out for us. You might need them once in a while. <laughs> I work the rosary beads still a lot, I'll tell you that. What's it like to call the White House your home office? Is that ever lost on you, or is there always a sense of awe? If you lose your awe, then you're going to miss something. And you can't lose your eye when you go through those doors, and you can't lose your eye when you walk on that field. And when you do, then you're going to miss something. So you got to refresh yourself every day. And, uh, you know, good leaders do that. So I want to close my final White House Correspondents' Dinner by just saying thank you. You have a relationship with the President of the United States, a real relationship. What is President Obama like from your standpoint and what, you know, on a daily basis and what you get to see? He's a remarkable guy, good leader, like each of these coaches I've just talked about, motivates his people, has his eyes on the prize. And when you get a chance to work with somebody like that, it's a unique and huge opportunity, and you take it. That's not what Donald Trump said. <laughs>